welcome ninth grade teachers, physics first teachers to the next video in this series. We are looking at the pacing guide today. Um, if I get to it, there'll be one more video in this series where I actually create a sample lesson using all of this material, uh, maybe blending it with some um, things I've used in the past to create a fun and engaging lesson. I'll build that lesson um, with the idea that most of you guys are on block schedule. So I'll try to plan it for a 90 minute block, have plenty of content in there for that. Um, and so hopefully you can see kind of how we can use all of this to create engaging lessons. So we've talked about the curriculum landing page. We've done the scope and sequence. Um, we are gonna move on to the pacing guide, which is just down starting on page two. Um, in the last video, if you didn't watch that one, I talked about how the resource, which is housed over on ThinkLink and the process to get there was complicated. And so if you didn't watch that one, everything there is now housed within this curriculum app. You can click on the links, the resource folders, it's all housed in Google Drive. Now it's downloaded and easy to access and read and understand. So you won't have to go elsewhere all of your stuff you can access through here. So I hope that helps everybody out if you missed that last um, video. All right, so let's start from the top, the chapter, the brief description about what that chapter is. That kind of gives you an idea of what the what you'll be learning over the course of those three sections. You've got your student, student learning objectives. The CPO resource wasn't um, necessarily great at giving me these things. So I modeled this off how the six to eight curriculum provided um, these sort of I can statements. Now these I had to create myself based off of what was in the resource. So you might find some critiques or changes that you would prefer out of these. Um, and that's totally fine. If you have some, if you've worked through these and you say, hey, these would be some great learning objectives that you could put in there. I love to add more of this, love to get your guys' feedback on it. Um, and again, you guys will be able to provide feedback both verbally as we meet, but also I'll have a link eventually up here where you guys can submit that after you've taught a unit. So let me know if anything here doesn't really fit well or um, you got some better ideas, would love to hear that. But these can be useful because most schools ask to have teachers have a student learning objective. A lot of the times in a I can statement, up on your board um, or in your lesson plans or both. And so this might be a good area for you to go to um, to actually pull those from. And so as you plan out your lesson, then you can come up here and say, hmm, do any of these tie into what I'm doing? And then you can pick this. And what's nice about them is I try to use the high DOK verb. It's like construct an explanation and model the scientific method, um, gather and synthesize data, so it's like really good data. It's using the vocabulary. So hopefully you find these things useful <clears throat> toward lesson planning and putting up on the board. And it should um, impress your instructional coaches and leaders in your building. We got the um, guiding phenomena suggestion. Uh, now this one, I do believe I pulled from the book. So again, this is another thing where it's like, if we as a cohort of physics teachers say, hey, there's a better one for this chapter. Let's go for it. Um, I think I just pulled these out of the textbooks. It gives a few different guiding phenomena suggestions. Um, and so I picked one of them. So you guys let me know, should these be changed? Is there better? Um, for now, what is the, oh, let's jump in into a higher zoom. Sorry. There we go. Now we can read. What is physics the study of and how do scientists describe the physical universe? Now you might think, why would I need to explain what physics is the study of? But I remember every year, students would show up to my physics class and be really confused. And they go, I thought this was a PE class, like in physical education. So it is very important that we stop, take a moment. What is physics? And how do we use physics to describe the physical universe? Everything from the extremely small to the very large. Um, and so that might be a good wrapping up discussion question at the end of this chapter. You got your two standards. So as you're planning out your lesson plan, which one of these standards is really what I'm driving at? 
with physics, it's a little bit weird because your standards don't really pick up until Newton's laws and momentum. And we don't get into the momentum and forces until like chapter three or four. So you start off not necessarily addressing these standards specifically, but in order to get up to forces and motion, you got to talk about what motion is. So these first few chapters are kind of like building blocks to lead up to these. Um, so they won't tie in immediately, but it spending some time in these first couple of chapters really, really help support the language that students need um, to better meet these standards criteria. So all this stuff up here, super helpful for planning out your lesson plans and putting things up on the board. Hopefully that will help um, make that an easy process for you. As we come down here, um, the actual pacing guide is broken down into a few different categories. Um, most important is over here on the left. These two guys are really useful for looking ahead, planning ahead, um, and I've put direct links so you can go ahead and view things easily. They still are housed in the resource folder, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, the big idea is there's, I'm tossing around changing this category into something else, but for now it's kind of, hey, what's going on in this week? What are the big topics? Um, so kind of put a bookmark on that, might change that. And then the suggested, how long does this take? Okay. Now the weeks, this is very suggested. Sometimes you're going to cruise past, like, I don't need to spend this long on this stuff, or I've made the pacing a little bit off. Let's keep this. I'm not trying to force everybody onto a specific pace, um, but I have kind of paced out what a quarter would look like. And so it's kind of a good measurement of how much time I should be spending on these things. Um, and keep it in mind that the start of the year, of course, you got to kind of build in classroom procedures and stuff like that. You don't want to wait too long before you start jumping into the content, though. So we only got nine weeks to get in the, that first quarter. Uh, that's a six chapter. So we'll definitely need to keep the pace going. Um, and you have to really think through what things you need to cover. Um, and for anyone who thinks the pacing is off, it's the same pacing as last year. I've just actually spelled out everything that's available to you. Um, it's available to you, not saying that you have to do everything here. All right. So let's start with the left because um, that's what you'll be using the most. Before we go down into what I've put in here, I want to highlight that I've created these Google Drive folders for alternate lesson designs created by other teachers. So as you guys go through, you'll probably end up modifying and adding in your own twist to things. And what I wanted to do was have a place that we could capture that from other teachers in the districts so that way you guys can share ideas um, for how you've enhanced things. I know one school is doing modern classroom, so they're tailoring everything to that. So if we can get that housed in here, now other teachers have access to that style of um, material and um, it'll be saved as a copy in there. You guys can make your own copy so that way the actual documents don't get pulled out or messed up or things like that. And you'll get credit in this. I'll say like, this is so-and-so's folder of things they've created for this chapter. So I think that's going to be super useful, really help everybody kind of build this out together as we move forward. We start off with the intro phenomena. Anytime that this is the first chapter of the uh, unit. Um, we talked about this when we did the curriculum landing page, what this is. I do have two links here. This one takes you to the image of that sliding sailing stone. That's to drive that first discussion. And then if you want some more additional videos and explanations for what's going on with this phenomenon, you can take students to here and that can really drive your discussions further. Um, and so that the main purpose of this phenomenon was to talk about what is motion? How do we have evidence of motion? What are the ways that we can describe motion, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so that would be your intro phenomenon. And what's great about talking about motion is you might talk about speed and students think, oh, now I can describe motion. But then you introduce acceleration. You're like, oh, well, now I can describe motion. Now we talk about collisions, momentum. It's like, okay, there's a lot that goes into motion. So you can always come back and tie into this conversation about motion. 
All right, then you get into actual sections. Each chapter has three sections. So you'll see 1.1, 1.2, and 1.3. Every chapter is three sections. Um, listed right underneath that, oh, let's get up to here, is a link to a Google Drive folder. I showed this in the last video, but just in case, all the resources that were on the old resource website, which you had to go through Clever and click a bunch of things, and it took a lot of load time, and they weren't labeled very well, now it's all right here, your graphic organizers, the guided reading, and the answers to those for you. You've got your investigation. Uh, I've talked about in a previous video how they have two versions. One that's designed to print out because it's got the lines here. And the other one is designed to assign digitally. And it has, you know, this one doesn't have it right. Oh, there it is. It has the uh, these fields, which if you actually download it, you can type in these, even though it's a PDF. So that's why it says online, because you can assign it online and students can type in responses. I went ahead and included it. I've always used the print one, just so the students have the lines to fill things out. You've got your presentation slides. Um, use these. You know, I definitely don't want us to have students just sit and note take every day. Um, but here are some of the notes that they provide. They have great graphics. Of course, anytime you introduce equations, it's got the equation breakdown, um, very organized, very neat. So hopefully you find these useful <clears throat> and use it in your classroom as you see fit. See fit. You could also do a flip classroom and have students preview these earlier, whatever you need to do. Um, visual aids that came with it, as well as the worksheet. So like this one only has one worksheet. The way they label these is they start with A, and throughout the rest of the chapter. So if you go to section 1.2, the next worksheet would be worksheet B, and then it resets when you go to a new chapter. So all those are listed here. Um, let's go back to where you were. So that's how you accessed it. A few things I linked here directly. They're still in the folder, but I just wanted some stuff like, okay, what is the graphic organizer for this section? Each section, most sections have a graphic organizer. So you can look at, okay, what is that? But if I wanted the answers for what students should have filled out by the end, I'd jump into the folder and find that. So just a few things linked here on the side, just so you can quickly access it. I gave a suggested progression for, hey, these are some things you could probably do. I'm not saying you have to, and sometimes you'll do more, sometimes you'll do less. And then I've always included this additional assignments area um, for, First section, I just have one thing listed, but as you see, sometimes they have a ton of worksheets and sometimes it's like, I don't think ninth grade when you talk about significant digits, that's kind of, I just always tell my kids, hey, just round to one decimal point. And even the rounding, they're not great at. So however much time you wanna spend on this, um, you can use these. I just never found those useful for myself. So it's kind of my own personal preference, I'm not saying you can't do these, it was just kind of, my suggestion. The guided reading, these are, let me show you what those are. And you got the textbooks in your classroom. Um, each section has a guided reading document. Let me show you that. Um, that students, as they go through and can read that section, there's questions and they go in order. So that way students can kind of answer as they read or read and then come back and answer. Um, I put those, these are always in the alternative or what did I call it? The additional assignments, because I don't think we need to have our students sitting with the book and reading and answering questions when you're in the classroom. But if you're ever going to be out, this makes a great lesson for a sub. They can have the books. They're supposed to go through this. It's all in order. Do preview it your, yourself before you go in. Um, I did find, as I did this teaching years ago, that there were mistakes um, and some of them, um, some questions that were just like way out there that you could cancel and get rid of. So that's how I always did it. This was my, if there's a sub that day or, you know, testing, we have not every student's there. That's why I still include it. It can be useful, but as terms of a normal, typical day, probably not. And then you see, now we're on to section 1.2. It just repeats. Here's the resources for that one. So they're housed within the section so that way you don't have to go searching through a bunch of stuff 
Very nice and easy. Same thing for worksheet three. And then down here um, is a link to the, um, the answers to all the worksheets. So all the worksheet A, B, C, all those things. If you need to grade them and you need the answers, well, here you go. Um, it's all in one. This one's going to be a longer document because there was a lot of worksheets. Sometimes there's hardly anything, but um, here's the answers for you for like worksheet 1E or worksheet 1G. So you have that uh, available to you. It's always linked down at the bottom of the chapter just so that you can find it. So if you're up in section one, just know that those answers are down here. Okay, so that's this area. This is where you're going to find most of your content that you would do in class. Um, so very useful over here. As we move over, still useful, but less so than this, I've linked directly to the tests. Um, so you'll see that there's the chapter test. Um, they give you, there's two different tests, the exact same questions, but they, um, rearrange the question order. So that way, if you have it printed out, the students are sitting next to each other. You have one student with version A, one with version P, version B, and you don't have to worry about students copying. And you can tell them like, hey, you guys have different versions. Um, don't try to copy. And then I've also linked the answers for you. It's nice about the answer key one. They give you the answers in, let's pull it up. If you decide, I don't know if you'll always assign these tests as is, um, but sometimes you may. They have the answers just listed here. They also have, if you've got the um, student printed test, these, if you sit this next to uh, their document here, they line up perfectly with where they're at on the page. So you would look here and you can look at the student answer just off to the left. And there you go, you can see their answers quickly. So if you do assign them, um, you could do it that way. Now, I'm thinking that most people aren't going to go into everything that's in every chapter, and therefore assigning these tests as is probably not fair to the students, but you could assign them as review or cross off certain ones that you don't need the students to answer or steal the questions from here and create your own quiz on Google Forms or some other quizzes, something like that. Pull questions for do nows, because if you remember, this is where I pulled questions for the quarter test. So you might even try to have some of those questions in here. Um, so use however you see fit. Um, definitely useful to have access to these though. Moving over, you've got the hands-on activities and invest interactives. They call them investigations for CPO. So these are all directly linked here. Oh, I've been sitting still for too long. Um, just so that you can view them easily. You'll also find them in the resource folder. You'll also see the, mostly what um, equipment you need. Sometimes it's a little, sometimes it's more. And what you'll also find is I've gone through and I've created videos. I have semester one done. Um, so this will take you to a video that I created showing you how to set up some of the problems you'll probably run into and all that stuff. So now we have set up videos for every lab so you can see the equipment, see how it works. Um, I'm kind of modeling, um, hey, you might run into a problem here. And I think because I'm recording, it's not wanting to play it, which is a bummer because I did. Oh, 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 we might be going. There we go. So there you got your investigation. One investigation. Um, and the views are different. Uh, you'll notice the first few videos, I had the recording in portrait mode. And I was like, oh. So they, it does get better quality as you move on. We'll go ahead and exit that. So if you have questions over the actual lab and how to set it up, I've got those videos. There's a few of them. So a lot of labs use the data collector. I spent just a video, how to use the data collector. Uh, using the smart track and car. I did a whole video walking through how to do that. So you can feel supported in using the supplies with CPL. 
And then that pretty much brings us over here, which I talked about the big ideas that may change. I'll keep you posted on that and the suggested week progression. That all repeats with each chapter. Most units are only two chapters. This one is four, so it's quite lengthy. And then the unit one assessment, unit one project. Again, there probably won't be a unit one assessment, but there'll be a quarter one assessment, which is unit ones and two. All right. In my last and final video, which if I get around to it, I'm planning on it, I will show you an example lesson plan where I pulled these things together in an interesting, engaging way to create a dynamic lesson that takes the 90 minute block period that you guys have. Um, so that way you can kind of visualize how to put together a, an interesting lesson to your teaching style. So. Mine is going to be built to my teaching style, but maybe that gives you ideas for yours. I'll go ahead and end our video there so it doesn't get crazy long, but hopefully you see now how that organization works and you start to think through how you might um, utilize it for your planning. All right. I will see you guys in the next one.